Hello, my little acorn crop. It's that time of year again. Pumpkin spice is back. It's time to gather the family close, enjoy some hot chocolate, go see the fall colors, enjoy the cooler temperatures, and of course, Halloween. Right. No, no. It's like every other day of the year when some ass at is telling me what I can and cannot wear on Halloween. Of all days. And of course, I'm talking about cultural appropriation. I figured we'd kick this month off with that because it's going to come up. And this isn't so much about what cultural appropriation is, but more what's kind of going on with society when this happens. Cultural appropriation is part of a moral panic. And when was the last time we had a moral panic? Back in the 80s and 90s, when everything was satanic. Um, your schools had bans on certain Halloween costumes. Things you couldn't dress up as were Jesus, the devil, no witches, werewolves, or superheroes that were in any way scary like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The truly terrifying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was part of the Satanic Panic, where suddenly everything was Satanic. The daytime talk shows had it on there. Specifically, repressed memories of Satanic abuse were all over television. Maury Povich was doing stuff on it. Dateline was doing stuff on it. And what this was is these young girls were saying that they were being impregnated and then the babies were being born and sacrificed to Satan. You know, um, D&D, the tabletop role-playing game, was suddenly satanic. Which, you know what, coming to think of it, having to figure out the math behind the chance to hit armor class zero, that had to be but I personally had people tell me that when their moms burned their D&D books back in the 80s that they screamed or the books wouldn't catch on fire and the only thing they could do would be to uh, sell them or throw them away. You know, these are people that told me this. This is not hearsay. You know, heavy metal music was of the devil. It still is. People still think heavy metal music is of the devil, especially with bands like Slayer and stuff. I mean, even Tipper Gore back in the day, who allegedly played drums in a rock band, was saying, I mean, she was the one that was freaking out, saying that, you know, metal was of the devil and listening to Marilyn Manson made you shoot up a school a la Columbine in 1999. And there was an interview that Marilyn Manson was doing at the time of Columbine, and he told the interviewer, I'm going to be blamed for this. My music's going to be blamed for this. Uh, six years before Columbine, you had the West Memphis Three in Arkansas. Um, they were just a, three kids in high school that wore trench coats and listened to metal music, and one of them had a, an interest in Wicca. They ended up going to jail for these three murders of these little boys who were hogtied and their genitals were mutilated. You can look it up, West Memphis 3, they did like three movies on these kids. Now with religion kind of taking this really heavy pounding, because most people today are atheists, I think, or are very secular, you know, religion is kind of stupid, it's the, the backwards people believe in God, you know, the big fuzzy sky daddy and stuff like that. And I'm a religious person, so maybe that discredits my whole theory here. I don't know. But now you have the same moral panic of over political correctness, and your devil is going to be white supremacists, or the KKK, or Nazi. And see, people like using the word Nazi because it has a visceral reaction. And that's why they say it. They don't say neo-Nazi because that's kind of defanged. They say Nazi because most people in this country have a visceral reaction to the word Nazi. My father was a World War II veteran, so yeah, I have a visceral reaction to that. And you know what? 
I've been called a Nazi. Political correctness is no more than this advancement of self-victimization through language. It's compelled speech. It's the concept that people who practice political correctness are morally superior to everyone else. And that's not necessarily true. To put it in the language of the 80s, the politically correct people are holier than thou, or better Christians than everyone else. So let's circle back around. The belief that borrowing things from other cultures is somehow wrong is cultural appropriation. It's nothing more than political correctness, and it's idiotic, because cultures grow and change by encountering and adopting other cultural traditions. One of the articles I'm going to cite down below is from a Japanese woman who schools Tumblr on cultural appropriation. Uh, stating basically 80% of Japanese customs, traditions, and food came from other countries, just like America. Now, if we circle back to Halloween a little more, Halloween comes from Irish immigrants to the United States, and it comes from the ancient Celtic holiday known as Samhain, which means summer's end. It has grown and changed from its original practices, and maybe because I'm pagan, I see Halloween quite a bit differently, I think, than muggles do, because I've expressed some of these opinions online, and I get told, well, no, Halloween's just a day to, to dress up and get drunk, which, hey, I don't think that's too far from what the old you know, got people in the olden days did. I'm going to geek out here a little bit. You know, Samhain is an ancient holiday. There's a calendar called the Caligny calendar, which was based on a 13-month cycle or the cycle of the moons. In the Caligny calendar, the month Samonios is believed to relate to the summer and the festival of Samhain is held on three nights of that month. These are days that are not counted in the month. They're days outside of time. Now, what's interesting about Samhain is that the gates of the other world are believed to be thrown open. So, and when I say other world, I don't mean it's not the same thing as Christianity. Because Christianity, you have a heaven and a hell, and that's hit. here, heaven and hell, which is a three realm kind of thing. But with Celtic mythology, you have the heavens where the gods reside, and the underworld where all the dead reside. So, it doesn't matter if you were a good person or a bad person, you still reside in the underworld. And um, the deities even reside, some some of the deities reside in what they call she mounds or fairy mounds. And yeah, it, it gets convoluted. Um, the s people like us showed up to Ireland and tricked the other spirits that were there at Ireland that were maybe more advanced, more powerful, uh, into having the bottom half of Ireland, which they thought was the southern part, and that actually meant the underground part. So that's how you have a lot of the spirits and things being underground. They can be in the heavens as well, but this is where they say the she mounds are opened up in at Samhain, and the spirits are free to walk the land. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because the spirits walking the land at this point are going to be, you know, dead grandma, you know, dead great grandpa, you know, and they're going to have a vested interest in us. They're not going to hurt us because we're their future. They reincarnate through us, our family line. So like my grandfather might be my son kind of thing. A lot of the spirits weren't bad spirits like a lot of people would have you believe or a lot of articles, but not all spirits are good, just like not all people are good. So you have this costume practice of people dressing as spirits to move among the spirits. Also, there is a lot of uh, pagans today practice the Dumb Supper, which is basically everybody gets around and eats in silence. But at least in, in my tradition, we set aside food for the dead on their own plate. And then that offering is made to the dead. I'm sure some clever lads and lasses figured out that if I dress as a spirit and go knock on the door, I'm going to get food. That's where you get your trick-or-treating, right there. Now what I'm getting at in like a really long roundabout way is that Samhain was a chaotic time. It was kind of a time anything goes. People dressed up. You know, it could, I mean, even if you don't believe in spirits, 
the people in the past did. Teenagers toilet paper people's houses and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a chaotic time and that's very important because it's a time outside of time too, which is even more important than it being a chaotic time. Someone evolves into Halloween, right? And I think it takes that aspect, it's at the outside of time, because how many people dress up as a slutty whatever, or how many women dress up as a slutty whatever, a slutty nurse, my roommate's daughter went as a slutty NASCAR girl or something, you know, everything's a, sl you know, slutty witch, you know, whatever, it's, all the women's stuff is a slutty, you know, slutty cop, and then the guy's stuff is usually you know, a competition between them to see who can be the most offensive. You know, who can come up with the most offensive costume, whether it's a giant penis with testicles or, you know, um, a fairly famous radio host one year went as a priest, but on the front of his costume was a little boy in the position about his, you know, waistline, you can guess from there. So, that's what it is. It's a time out of time when the rules of culture don't apply. So this is why I have problems with the cultural appropriation aspect of Halloween is because it is this time outside of time. But also think of the potential. You know, one night a year you can be anything you want to be. You can wear any costume you want to wear. And you know, how could be how could it be a bad thing with the potential of seeing a through someone else's eyes. How could that be bad? I mean, yeah, most people are just, you know, slutty girls dressing up to get drunk, whatever, but that potential is there for somebody to actually do the research and dress up, you know, like the little girl in the article below that was dressed up as, you know, a traditional, I don't know if it's geisha, I don't remember, sorry, I don't remember the article, but a traditional um, makeup and everything from Japan, you know, that, that moment of seeing culture through someone else's eyes, that potential is there. And I don't think we should overlook that, you know. So this year, I encourage you to wear whatever the fuck you want and embrace the chaos, because I know I sure will. And with that, good night, America, wherever you are. Everything was satanic. Uh, shit. God damn it, cat. Oh, God damn you, bull. Stop it. Cannot be whacking the microphone with your tail. Cal calendar. Yeah. God damn it, bull. I'm going to kill you.